Blog Talk Radio. Well, hello, uh, hello, everyone. Uh, this is Al Emmons here uh, for a special interview. Um, on the phone with me today, I have um, the creator of Sten Clinton Cigars, Robert Peters. Um, hi, Robert. Welcome to the Val Lemon Show. Hi, Val. Good morning. Thanks for having me. Oh, no problem. And first of all, before we get started, I want to apologize for almost crashing your side over the weekend <laughs> or participating <laughs> in that. <laughs> I, was, yeah, I, was, it was I was amazed. Yeah, no, it, it was fun. Uh, you know, as as web developers, we were used to that kind of thing. We just didn't expect it to go that big, that fast. So we hadn't really, we haven't really shored up the foundation of our technology. So, uh, but, you know, it kept us busy. Yeah, I saw you had like two point five million hits in like the, in nine days. That is correct. Yes. That is amazing. And so I wanted to have you on because I I think this is not only funny, but I also think it's sending a message. Um, to uh, Hillary Clinton, who announced that she was going to run for president. But um, I wanted to have you on because there's a little bit, um, some folks that I have um, been in discussion with, there's some mis- mis- there's some confusion, miscommunication, and then you also have some things that you wanted to share with people as well. So um, so let's get started. And um, you want to tell everyone, first of all, what is Ben Clinton Cigars? Uh, St. Clinton Cigars is a service that allows people to come in and anonymously gift a cigar or several cigars to uh, the Clinton campaign. And it was really just meant as a tongue-in-cheek reminder of what it was like to be there in her, in her last day in the office. Uh, we really feel like it's, imp- it's important for people to get that out there. And we wanted to go approach this in a way that was humorous and satirous. And without really being, you know, a lot of people are finding that we're, that it's mean or that it's bullying. And it's really, it's not the intent. What we want people to do is, like, really just stand up and pay attention to what was going on here. Right. And so you've taken a little heat on that. Yeah, you can definitely some, do that. Some, well, some, some folks have said you're bullying. I, I, do, I do want to say that. But, um, and I also wanted to let everyone know that um, I, I'm, what I read, and from talking to you, you're actually a libertarian, but you have Republicans and Democrats. On your team, we we do. We're actually we are a very uh, it, politically we're a very mixed up office, um, and we tend to talk these things out and we we plan through things and we make sure everybody's on board with it. We don't do any one thing in our office that would offend or would set anybody aside. And, you know, in this particular site, especially we are uh, we're we are unanimous in the fact that we all wanted to get behind this and do this. Right, because um, I mean, people are under the misconception that just because you're a Democrat, you're going to support Hillary Clinton. Um, and that women are going to support her as well, and that's completely not the case. Um, that is correct. And, there, and there's actually an organization who's uh, who has reached out to us once. It's actually it's uh, Democrats Against Clinton. Uh, huh. As as far as I see, they were actually pretty strong at the moment. They're about a uh, twenty or thirty thousand people strong. Wow, I didn't know that. Okay, so so this started out when you started this nine days ago. I want I just want to reiterate that nine days ago. This has just been amazing to me to watch it. And, and to participate in, in helping it grow. But um, so you first wanted to donate the funds to the Wounded Warrior Project. And now, now they say that they don't want those donations. So what now? Uh, that's correct. And it's really you know, it's no fault of their own. It's, uh, it's probably more a logistics problem. It was more a logistics problem on our side. They're funded. The Wounded Warrior Project is funded by the government, so they really can't take. They can't let it ever be construed that they're taking a side. And we get that. We understand. And we we you know we still believe in them. They're still a fantastic uh, project. Right now, we're looking for additional uh, charities that are either for veterans or for active duty. We're in talks right now with a uh, with one that I can't, I won't name. Uh, they're local to the Florida area. And they are actually entirely, they are veteran-owned, veteran-operated. They receive no funding from the state or federal government. Uh, everything that they do is through fundraising efforts of their own. And uh, they just kind of initially reached out to us to, to open up a dialogue and see how we would feel about support, uh, giving them some support. And that's something we're really interested in. And uh, my partner is actually out with them, uh, speaking with them this morning. And another thing that I wanted to point out, Robert, because um, when I posted this to Twitter, I tweeted uh, about it. Um, I had a, a wife of a wounded warrior that she completely was offended and said that you were using wounded warriors um, and veterans for your political, you know, gain. But I wanted to point out that you, all of you are veterans that started this. Uh, the three main partners: two of us are veterans. One of us is a former state trooper. Okay, so so you're not in any way, shape, or form trying to do this on the back of veterans because you're a veteran yourself. 
Absolutely not. No, I mean it's just something that you know, especially in these last couple of years, we're really seeing what's happening to to veterans, to wounded veterans, and homeless veterans that are out there, where they're not being taken care of by the government, and they've kind of just been swept aside after this. And this is important to us because we are, in fact, veterans ourselves. And God forbid that was ever us. Right. Exactly. And I'm with you there because everyone that listens to my show and knows me knows that I'm always trying to help veterans too because. I am not that kind of person to go out and take, you know, and but this is what I can do. Um, Correct. So, and I, I'd so like to point out one other thing is sure. uh, we, uh, we've stated that uh, we want as much as 80% of the proceeds from this to go to charity. We're not trying to make any money on this. We're not trying to keep any money on this. Um, we're just really 20% is about operational expense, plus or minus a little bit. Uh, going with a new cigar company, we have to negotiate with them, so we may move that line a little bit. But we're really trying to get the bulk of anything we bring in to go directly to charities. Okay, so let's talk about that. You mentioned a new cigar company. So you lost your first one, you, I, I, I've read. And so what, can you tell us what happened with that a little bit? Sure. Well, I did a local radio um talk show yesterday and following that the Tampa Bay Tribune actually picked up a story and they ran with it uh, about 10 o'clock yesterday morning and that started to throw a lot of negative press on our local cigar supplier uh, and they decided that they were going to pull out at the last minute. And how many did you have so, in order with him, I, might I ask? Uh, it was about, two, it was like 2,024 cigars in total. Wow. And they declined that, Okay. And they, yeah, they turned around, totally declined that, and that's kind of put us into a that put us into a bit of a spin yesterday. But uh, as we found out, it, we gathered our resources. Some people started contacting us. A lot of people came to us with some really great suggestions. And uh, as of this morning, we're talking with two different companies who uh, shall remain nom- anonymous until uh, they're fully on board and uh, seeing where we can go with that. So, are you amazed with the response that you've had from this? Uh, we are absolutely amazed. Uh, as uh, as programmers, uh, we're always we're always hoping that something we do goes viral and takes off big. And you know, there's a build up to that. It's normally you know uh, weeks or months for this to have just been launched on day one and immediately begin to to spiral out of control. Was uh, it, it was amazing, and humbling, and, and amazing. Yeah, and it's only been like I said, nine days, and you've had 2.5 million hits. So that's absolutely amazing. Um, so I want to ask, have you had any contact with the Clinton campaign on this? Uh, our partners, one of our partners reaches out to them every so often. We have not been able to get any comment or we don't really get anything from them. If anything, occasionally we get hung up on. <laughs> well, yeah. Well, 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 I mean, yeah. I mean, I can't imagine. Okay, I just have to ask. <laughs> have you spoke with Monica Lewinsky about this? No. <laughs> no. No, 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 and you know, and uh, well, there's one part of me as a yeah, uh, there's one part of me that it wouldn't even really like to use her name, but it kind of played into really to what we were doing. It, it kind of had to be there. The um, right. yeah, you know, I feel I feel like she's kind of, she's a strong woman. She's come a very long way since then. Yeah, she has. She has. I I've, I've I follow her as well. Um, so you, how did you guys come up with this idea? Uh, we were actually sitting around the break room. It was the day after Hillary had announced that she was going to run. <clears throat> and uh-huh. we were just sort of discussing that and the, the ramifications of, of what could and could not come from uh, from her being a part of this. And I had just happened to make the comment uh, just kind of offhanded. You know, doesn't she remember the last time she was in office? And, you know, does she really want to bring Bill back for that? And somebody right. said, oh, you know, maybe maybe we should send her a cigar. And then I opened my mouth and said, maybe we should start a whole website to send her cigars. And that's kind of where it came, took off from. And legitimately, we probably built that in just a few days with testing. So you guys are the kind of guys that get things done. Maybe we should have had you at healthcare.gov. <laughs> <laughs> actually, we actually say we probably would have come in much lower. We, we would have come in at a much yeah. lower price and delivered much better product. You mean you wouldn't, what was it, $9 billion? You wouldn't have charged them $9 billion and a product would have worked maybe, huh? I'd have come in at like eight point nine. <laughs> okay, so so what are the, some of the things? Because you know, in my opinion, and I have strong opinions um, on Hillary Clinton, being that I actually um, would have voted for Hillary Clinton, um, and that's the weird part. I everyone knows this as well. I um, I used to be called Young Hillary. I was a staunch Democrat. I didn't understand why 
nobody could get free anything, you know. And then I, I got a real job after I graduated college, and I realized that nothing's free. Um, but so yeah. during that time period, I think people uh, have forgotten the things that the Clintons and um, and Hillary herself um, don't, ha- have done. And being from Little Rock myself, we don't all agree with her in Little Rock, by the way. I know people think Arkansas, you know, Arkansas. I don't think, uh, I don't think that Bill Clinton could even probably get elected governor. And he did say that the other day. And, and I, I would probably agree with that because we just elected our first um, Republican governor um, and turned the state Republican over 125 years, which I'm not a Republican either. But um, so what are some of the things that you guys think that it's important that people remember? Or maybe just because these kids were younger, you know, then that they don't know about. What are the things that we need to be informed on about Hillary Clinton? Well, I think one of the big things, especially with Hillary Clinton, is that her entire political career, if we, if we go all the way back to the Nixon days, and a lot of younger kids say won't know that she was part of, that she was there for Nixon and Watergate, and she was dismissed for, she was dismissed for misconduct. You know, and that's right. the entire, you can sum up her entire career as one, she's been misconduct for, you know, all these for so many decades that every time she touches something there's a conspiracy there's uh, there's lies there's deceit there's a track record it's all in paper and it's all there and is this the person that you really want running a country right i, I mean and that's and people are like oh nixon we don't even know that about that because we're 19 years old just starting to vote so i think it's important that they also learn about her history in, in, in little rock when they were in little rock which was at the rose law firm there's so much history there that she's just trying to sleep under the rug right and, and i mean I, and I think a lot of her campaign even just leading up to it in, the, in this through 2014 a lot of people were separating themselves from from the clintons 